Hello there, welcome to the Raftera channel. My name is Raf and I aim to provide the best Legends of Runeterra content on the internet. I am a master rank player who has played in the professional level of LOR. I've competed in several seasonal tournaments and participated in the qualifiers for the 2021 World Championship. Today, I bring to you my full guide on Minion Catalog Control, a grindy control deck that I've been playing in master rank for the past days. From 0 LP, I played 30 master games with this deck and I ended at 60% win rate, peaking at top 39 masters with 174 LP. Minion Catalog Control is a control deck that wants to outlast and outvalue your opponent over a long grindy game. We are running several infinite value engines. Minion for cheap board presence, Catalog of Regrets for duplicating spells. Go hard and Commander Ledros as our game enters. Out of all these engines, Catalog of Regrets is what makes the deck shine. Against aggro decks, you can duplicate pings and drain spells like Go Hard, Vile Feast, and Withering Mist. Against midrange and combo decks, you have Vengeance and Piercing Darkness to remove key units. Having Catalog of Regrets on board will gain you card advantage across multiple turns, since you can cast removal spells twice or make your opponent burn mana if they are too afraid of your duplicated spell. We are running Elise as our only champion to trick our opponent into thinking that they are facing an Elise Spider's aggro deck only to reveal that we are actually a control deck that can efficiently remove the early units that they mulliganed for. Outside of this, Elise is a solid early game champion, the spiders she summons can be used as triggers for a Venus flock, and in rare cases you can level her up and win by hitting your opponent's nexus manually through attacks. The game plan for this deck is relatively straightforward. You want to efficiently remove your opponent's units with your spells, while developing some board presence with Elise, Minion, and Buru Sentinel. Catalog of Regrets will give your spells double the value, while Minion can keep trading and coming back every turn. You will rinse and repeat this until you reach the late game and finish with Commander Ledros or pack your bags. Although, I'm very sure that there will be lots of games where your opponent will just get frustrated and just surrender even before reaching this point. For the mulligan, I generally always keep Elise and Catalog of Regrets. The rest depends a lot on what you're facing. More on this when we delve into specific matchups later in this video. For the matchups that I will not be able to cover in this video, worry not. I will be posting my usual matchup guides and tips in the deck guides category of my Discord channel. Make sure to join the channel, link will be in the description below. The main reason I would recommend this deck for climbing in the current meta is because of the great matchup against popular Demacia decks, Pantheon Yumi Fated and Misfortune Scouts. In the games I played, I went undefeated against Pantheon Yumi, one of the strongest and most popular decks in the meta right now. Make sure to check out my full guide on Pantheon Yumi if you want to learn how to play this deck. I lost many games playing against Shadow Wilds PNZ control decks, mainly because they are running multiple copies of Aftershock, which can remove our catalog of regrets. However, these decks are not too popular, especially in lower ranks, so I wouldn't be worried too much about running into them. Now let's go into some general tips. Number one tip is to play reactively. You are a control deck that wants to remove units. Do not be afraid to take open passes. It's almost always good for you if your opponent skips turns because you are going closer to the turn where you can play Commander Ledros. If you draw Catalog of Regrets early, you may want to delay casting your spells until Catalog of Regrets is on board. Being able to double cast spells like Go Hard, Death's Hand, and Revenge Flock is very impactful. However, do not be greedy if you are up against aggro decks and you need to use spells to survive. When you have Catalog of Regrets on board, you want to plan a few turns ahead and sequence how you use your spells for maximum efficiency. 
A good example for this is when you have both Go Hard and Ravenous Flock in hand. These are both low-cost spells, so it's very easy to play them inefficiently if you are not thinking ahead. The best sequencing for using the spells is the following. On turn 4, you want to play Catalog of Regrets and use Go Hard on the unit that you want to remove. On turn 5, you want to remove that unit with Ravenous Flock and then use the Fleeting Go Hard on another key unit in order to set up your Fleeting Ravenous Flock next turn. And then on the next turn, on turn 6, use the Fleeting Ravenous Flock in order to remove the other unit. You can also use this trick when combining Ravenous Flock with other damage spells like Vile Feast, Withering Whale, Death Sand, or Withering Mist. If you casted Vengeance or Piercing Darkness with Catalog of Regrets on board, you can use the Fleeting spell next turn to scare your opponent from playing units. As long as you're representing enough mana for your hard removals, they will most likely skip their turn and burn their mana in those spots. When making combat trades, you want to prioritize trading minion first since he will always come back in the next turn. If you have Buru Sentinel, remember to play it first before removing units. This is just a simple thing but I found myself always forgetting to do it when I'm too focused on my spells. Our best matchups are against midrange slash combo decks like Pantheon Yumi, Shivana midrange, or Riven Reckoner since these decks focus on keeping key units alive. The sample game that we'll go into is against the most popular deck from this category, Panther Yumi Fated. Against these combo midrange decks, you are looking for Catalog of Regrets, Vengeance, Piercing Darkness, Ravenous Flock, Elise, and Go Hard if you have a good hand. You want hard removal against their key units. Your way to win against these decks is to remove their key units in the mid game and to finish them off with Commander Ledros in the late game. In this game, I didn't keep Go Hard because my hand is not good enough. I'd consider keeping Go Hard if I already had Ravenous Flock since the two cards combo really well together. On turn 2, I summoned my House Spider and went for the attack despite my opponent having a combat trick. I didn't mind getting the combat trick out now. I'd rather have them use these buffs on Saga Seeker over better units like Pantheon or Wounded White Flame later in the game. After my opponent played Yumi, I started searching my deck for removal. I was able to draw Scorched Earth. I blocked with my Spider here in order to have my Scorched Earth ready to be used anytime. On turn 4, I passed first since I didn't want to have no mana left if I play Catalog of Regrets. After he played Brightsteel Protector, I went ahead and used my Catalog of Regrets. Casting Scorched Earth here would be too risky since it can be countered by Guiding Touch. After he played Pantheon, I opened with Scorched Earth in order to remove the threat of an 8-8 attacker. If he used Guiding Touch to heal up, I can use Vile Feast to damage the Saga Seeker again. I take a significant amount of damage this turn, but I wasn't too worried because I have lots of heals in my deck. Come closer. I don't fight. I now have a fleeting Scorched Earth for his Pantheon. I open with Go Hard to damage Pantheon and activate Scorched Earth. Afterwards, I can safely cast Scorched Earth. I still have Vile Feast to counter him if he uses Guiding Touch. In order to win this sequence, he would need both Guiding Touch and Bastion to stop my removals. However, he didn't have any of those so we successfully removed his second Fated unit. With no other units on board and probably in hand, he decides to use Brightsteel Protector as his main unit right now.
The next turn, I used my fleeting go hard and started to search my deck again with whispered words. I open my Withering Mist here in order to heal up and put his unit in range of my Ravenous Flock. Threatening Rally with an Overwhelm unit, I used Ravenous Flock immediately. It's very likely that he doesn't have an answer to this since he didn't have an answer in the previous turns. Afterwards, I went ahead and summoned Baiburu Sentinel since he most likely didn't have any other units left in hand. He was already desperate earlier when he casted his spells on Bright Steel Protector. The next turn, he just surrenders out of frustration. Even if he didn't surrender, I already drew my Piercing Darkness to remove his next unit. A lot of your games against Pantheon Yumi will end in rage quits before even reaching into the late game. Hey, before we continue, if you haven't noticed yet, this video is completely ad-free so that you can watch continuously without interruption. If you like the content so far and you want to support me, don't forget to like the video and leave a random or non-random comment. Also, consider subscribing if you want more videos like this. Next, we will move on to aggressive deck types like Elise Spiders, Yordles in Arms, Discard Aggro, and Scouts. The sample game we will go into is Scouts. Scouts can also be classified as midrange, but right now, they will be one of the most common decks that you will face in ladder. For the mulligan, you're going to keep early units like Elise, House Spider, and Minion. Pings like Vile Feast and Go Hard are also good to keep. Catalog of Regrets you can keep if you already have early units. Ravenous Flock is a card that I like to keep specifically against Scouts since it's very efficient removal for Misfortune. Against Burn Decks, I also like keeping Withering Whale or Withering Mist if I already have at least one early unit. In this game specifically, I mulliganed away Atrocity. I was testing out Atrocity with my first version of this deck, but I decided to remove it ultimately because it felt like a dead card most of the time. On turn 1, my opponent played Fleet Feather Tracker. I could have used Go Hard here, but I wanted to save Go Hard and Ravenous Flock for Misfortune. I will also try to delay my spells until I have Catalog of Regrets on board. After his attack, that's when I went ahead and summoned House Spider. I was not too worried about my Nexus Hell since he doesn't have any burn damage. On the next turn, I pass first to see if he would play Misfortune. Remember, always play reactively. Make sure to keep up spell mana for you to react to what your opponent does. Seeing that he didn't play Misfortune, I played my Buru Sentinel here in order to match his board presence. On turn 4, he finally plays Misfortune. I targeted the Fleet Feather Tracker first with Go Hard in order to stop him from getting a free pull into Misfortune's skill. I also wanted to test first if he would use Ranger's Resolve. I still have Vile Feast into Ravenous Flock if I wanted to remove Misfortune this round. After this sequence, I made the hand read that my opponent didn't have Ranger's Resolve. I played Catalog of Regrets here so that I can replay Go Hard again next turn. I wasn't in a rush to remove Misfortune anymore since I can still remove her next turn unless my opponent gets super lucky and draws a Ranger's Resolve. On turn 5, I opened with my fleeting go hard in order to play around any barrier effects like Bright Steel Protector. My opponent casts Golden Ages on his Misfortune and my Ravenous Flock just shuts his turn down. I also casted Death's Hand here but I honestly can't remember why I did that. This is a huge misplay. Using Death's Hand here is completely unnecessary. Because of this misplay, there's a chance that I would get a fleeting Death's Hand instead of a fleeting Ravenous Flock next turn. Luckily, I was still able to get my fleeting Ravenous Flock. We must all do our duty. My opponent plays Scythria the Bold, but his units are now very easy pickings with my removal spells since he is at 0 mana.
The next turn, I use my Fleeting Withering Mist in order to get rid of his board. I also casted Go Hard to set up a possible Pack Your Bags next turn. The next turn, I packed my opponent's bags, and my opponent loses all hope of coming back into the game. Finally, we will dive into control decks. Our worst matchups belong in this category, specifically Shadow Isles PNZ control decks, usually with Senna, Kindred, Vi, or Jace. During my climb, these were the decks that stopped me from gaining LP. I think I went 0-4 against these decks. The main reason why these are hard matchups is because they have access to Aftershock. We cannot outvalue them in the mid game if we will lose our catalog of regrets. However, I wouldn't be too worried about facing these decks outside of Master's Ladder. Other control decks include Nar Trundle and the deck that we are facing in our sample game, Senna Vagar Darkness. Against control decks, you are looking for Catalog of Regrets, Elise, and Minion. Against Darkness specifically, I also keep Vengeance and Piercing Darkness for their champions. Remember to always represent your hard removals from turn 4 onwards so that they will hesitate to play their champions. Do not be afraid to take open passes. If they are not summoning Vagar, they are not progressing their win condition. In the early turns, I am more than happy to trade my small units for his. Here, I take the open attack in order to pass priority to my opponent. I want to maintain 6 mana in order to represent Vengeance in case he plays Vagar. Now that he dropped below 4 mana, I can safely play Catalog of Regrets without fear. He starts turn 5 with an open pass due to my removals. I'm more than, more than happy to burn his mana and waste his turn. I already have Ledros in hand, I can just delay until the late game. On turn 6, once again, I take the open pass. If he takes the pass, I just go closer to Ledros while he's not playing anything. He finally plays Vagar, and I respond immediately with Vengeance. Next turn, it's very likely that he will just waste his turn again because of the threat of my fleeting Vengeance.
And so next turn, I played my second Catalog of Regrets because I would still have 6 mana to represent my Fleeting Vengeance. At this point, I just used Death's Hand to remove his unit. If he plays Vagar, I can still remove it next turn with double Death's Hand. On the next turn, I open with Whisper Words and then play Elise afterwards. I will still have 6 mana up even after these actions. I did not want to play Ledros yet, since I would make it too easy for him to play Senna or Vagar if I'm only at 3 spell mana left. Now it's turn 10, I can play Commander Ledros and start chipping away at his Nexus. From this point onwards, it will be a continuous grind of removing his units while replaying Commander Ledros repeatedly. Casting go hard with two catalog of regrets on board also means that pack your bags will eventually come in order to close out this game. Darkness and light. 
Now I have pack your bags and I can start threatening lethal damage. In this spot, he survives with some heal cards. He tries his best to survive, but eventually, he runs out of answers and surrenders to our commander, Legos. Now it's time to learn how to modify the deck depending on what you're facing. There are different decks based on your rank and server, so learning how to do this is essential for climbing and ranked. The current deck list that I have is balanced to have decent matchups against different types of decks. But you can change the ratio of some cards if you find yourself facing specific deck types more than others. If you are facing more burn or swarm type decks, you can add one more copy of Withering Whale and remove one copy of Vengeance. If you are facing mostly control, you can go for three copies of Commander Ladros and remove Withering Whale altogether. Scourge Earth is a good card to add more copies of if you are facing landmark based decks like the Bandel Tree. Ruination is also a card that I considered. However, the current meta is too fast for Ruination to be useful. In a slower, mid range dominant meta, Ruination is definitely a card you should consider. As a final tip, always remember that the number one secret to climbing is to learn from your losses. Make sure that you always know the reason why you lose so that you can work on it in the next games. Once again, if you loved this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Good luck climbing!